The winds are ferocious right now. It's almost as if some of these structures have been through a blender. The loss of phone service on the island has made the recovery process even harder. How long do you think it's going to take for you to have power? We need water. We need cell phone service. Cell phone service is a big thing. AT&T maintains five disaster recovery warehouses across the world. There are four in the U.S. and one in the U.K. Anything from small local disaster where uh, responders or customers need extra service, enhanced service, wildfires, terrorist incidents, local emergencies. When disasters and emergencies strike, AT&T has this equipment, these assets, these warehouses that are ready to go and can be deployed during disasters to help restore service for our customers. One of the big things that we use is called a sat cult, so that's a satellite cell and light truck, and it's basically a mobile cell site. Uh, we can deploy these anywhere and provide cellular mobile service to our customers. Uh, right now we're in one of the disaster recovery warehouses that AT&T maintains. So this is one of the FirstNet flying cows. Flying cow is a flying cell on wings. This acts as the cell tower itself. This gives you the radio height so that you get more coverage. It is a quadcopter. This is the payload that the quadcopter can lift. So this is the antenna and this is the radio, cellular radio. Um, it is tethered, so that means there is a cable that comes from the bottom of the drone and connects back to a power source and also connects back to the backhaul. So when I say backhaul, that's how the cellular radio talks to the rest of the world. Right? It doesn't just happen by magic, it's got to talk via a fiber, op fiber optic connection or a satellite connection or some other kind of, kind of hard connection. This is a satellite cell on light trailer, the same service, just in a different form factor. So from a user perspective, if I pull out my phone and all of a sudden all the macros around here shut down and we turn these up, same for me, I don't see a difference. Um, I can still call home, I can still check my email, I can still go to Google. This one just is what we call a flyaway. So this one can be lifted by helicopter or put onto a, an airplane for transport. If we need to get to a place where there's no roads, bridges are out, floods, earthquakes, large holes in the ground, whatever it is, we can't get to some place, we can lift something via helicopter and bring it to where it needs to go. It's about the mission. How many users are you gonna support? What's the traffic demand? Are you doing streaming video for, let's say, cameras? Or are you doing Volti for telephone calls? So we have to look at all of that traffic mix in order to make that decision. The police department or fire department or whoever's doing search and rescue will define what the mission is. There's a national coordinating center and that organization has each of the carriers and each of the telecom providers as part of their constituency. And they discuss the implications, let's say Hurricane Maria as an example, and they will, they will start to entertain, okay, uh, you know, XYZ carrier uh, has an outage, um, at t can you help them by providing roaming coverage? things of that nature. And so in Hurricane Maria, the answer was absolutely yes. We, at t have requested roaming from others in that cases, and others have requested roaming on us, and that all takes place through our regulatory organization. Each uh, event has their own uniqueness, and Puerto Rico was an extremely challenging situation because of the lack of food, the lack of water, uh, in a very humid, envir hot environment. You, you're getting assets and people to an island. It's not like traveling across roads in the United States. I would say there was at least a thousand people from the mainland into, in Puerto Rico at, at the high point of Hurricane Maria. We actually turned some aircraft and boats from just 
sending technology material over to Puerto Rico to just flying food and water over to Puerto Rico. We had to do that. Hurricane Michael has challenges just by the sheer devastation. And there were houses, probably 2,000 square foot houses that were completely blown off their foundations. There was nothing left on the foundations and they were probably blown, I'd say at least a half a mile across, across the road. After every storm, we look back and say, okay, what could, what, what, what could we have done better? One of the improvements that came out of Harvey was we ran into difficulty getting through flooded areas. So one of the solutions that we came up with, and there are other solutions as well, uh, is amphibious vehicles. So this unit can go on land or in any depth of water. So can go in a full lake up to however deep you want to. This unit floats. Even if you get water on the inside, it still floats, still moves. You can either fit cargo or more people in here. So there are bench seats in here. Flooded areas, muddy areas, swampy areas, you name it, we can get through with these things. When we are deployed to disaster areas, people need a place to work. This is our rolling office space. Um, we have radios, HF radios, stationed all around so we can talk to our folks in the field. It is air conditioned, it has its own generator. This is where the magic is. This is how we connect back to the AT&T LAN. Um, there's a satellite dish on the roof. I actually slept in here for Hurricane Michael. It wasn't so bad, you know, because there were no hotel rooms at all available. And I drove this down, so I got to sleep in it. When we go into a disaster area, we definitely don't want to tax the local area. Folks there need to find their own hotel rooms, they need to find food, they need to go repair their houses. So we want to bring everything that we think we're going to need with us. Um, so inside here, you guys can come inside. So in here is everything you would ever need, ever. Um, we have everything from screwdrivers to welders to blowers to chainsaws to hammer drills to pickaxes to every size tie wrap. You can see everything's labeled. Um, we have one of these in each of our warehouses. They're all set up the same. We keep everything powered up because we want to make sure these are always working, always up and ready. I think it was Michael. We needed to cut something or grind something and we didn't have any angle grinders and we did have to go out and purchase them. But since then, every warehouse now has several angle, angle grinders. I personally was down in Mexico Beach when we set up the sat cults there in Mexico Beach two or three days after the storm hit. And it was, it was a war zone. I remember seeing people just wandering around. And once we set it up, they were very, very thankful that they could call home. I was at one section, one of the other teams down the street. Um, they actually had somebody come up and they were able to give them a phone. They were able to call their daughter or, or some sibling and say, yes, I'm alive, and they hadn't heard from him in three days. Um, so, you know, stuff like that is really awesome, um, you know, because they, these people lost everything. And for them to be able to, to call a family member and say, yeah, I'm alive and I'm okay, that's great. <laughs>